Hello everyone and welcome to our series about various fraud and scam happening all around the world. Now, do you think you are immune to fraud? Absolutely not. In reality, anybody can fall victim to it. Frauds come in all shapes and sizes and I will help you learn how to identify them and report them to the proper authorities. Now, what is a scam? It's a confidence trick or a scheme is an attempt to defraud a person or group after first gaining their confidence, used to the classical sense of the trust. Confidence tricks exploit characteristics of the human psyche such as dishonesty, honesty, vanity, compassion, credulity, irresponsibility, innocence, and greed. Every year, thousands of people lose their money and personal information to scams. You may have received some by email or an odd accent speaking IRS agent calling you about your unpaid taxes of 2007. Scam artists use different types of fraud to try to trick you of your hard earned money. Scammers are getting smarter all the time and I will help you scam proof your life. This way, you won't be tempted to actually think you inherited $10 million from an uncle you never met in Nigeria. Now, I am your host, Dr. Dan Amzalag, and I am the Scaminator. In today's episode, I will be covering the infamous Nigerian 419 letter. A Nigerian scam is a form of upfront payment or money transfer scam. They are called Nigerian scam because the first wave of them came from Nigeria, but they can originate anywhere around the world. The 419 part of the scam comes from the section of the Nigeria Criminal Code which outlaws the practice. It is also called advanced fee scam. So how does this scam work? You receive an unsolicited message that masquerade as some manner of business proposition, request for assistance, notice of a potential inheritance, or opportunity to help a charity. In fact, there is seemingly endless array of cover stories that the scammer uses in order to draw potential victim into the con. The messages all claim that your help is needed to access a very large sum of money and promise that you will receive a significant portion of this money in exchange for your help. The scammers use a variety of stories to explain why they need your help to access the funds. For example, they may claim that political climate or legal issues preclude them from accessing funds in a foreign bank account and request your help to gain such access. They may claim that your last name is the name as the deceased person who owned an account and suggest that you act as the next of kin to this person in order to gain access to the account funds. They may claim that a rich businessman who has a terminal illness needs your help to distribute his wealth to the charity. Now, they may also claim that a soldier stationed overseas has discovered a cache of hidden cash left by a fleeing dictator and needs your help to get the money out of the country. As noted, the messages offer to let you keep a significant percentage of the fund in exchange for your assistance. Now, the percentage is a bait that the scammer used to pull potential victim deeper into the scam. Now, once a recipient has taken the bait and initiated a dialogue with the scammer, he or she will soon receive requests for fees that the scammer claim are necessary to processing costs, tax and legal fees, bribes to local officials or other totally imaginary fees. Now the scammer will warn the victim that these advanced fees need to be paid before the fund can be procured. Now in reality, the supposed funds do not exist. The major purpose of this scam message is to trick recipients into parting with their hard earned money in the form of these advanced fees. Now fraudulent requests for fees will usually continue until the victim realizes he or she is being conned and stops sending money. Now in some cases, the scammer may gather enough information to access the victim bank account directly or steal the victim's identity. Now an alternative type of scam fee, a used message claiming that recipients have won a large sum of money in an international lottery or promotion. Victims are asked to send advance fees and personal information, 
ostensibly to allow the prize funds to be processed and sent to the winner. In reality, there's no prize. Typically, advanced fee scammers will send many thousands of identical scam messages to recipients all around the world. Now, it only takes a few recipients to fall for the claims and the message to make the operation pay off for the criminals. Now, if you receive one of these scam messages, it is important that you do not respond to it in any way. The scammers are likely to act upon any response from those they see as potential victims. The best thing to do with these scam messages is to simply delete them. Now, if you have supplied banking and credit card details, personal information, and copies of identity documents such as your driver license or passport to the scammers, then you could become a victim of identity theft. For details on what to do, read the information about the identity theft published by the Federal Trade Commission or other related organization if you are located outside of the USA. Unfortunately, there's a probably very little you can do to recover any money you have already sent. The first step is to seize all communication with the scammers and do not, under any circumstances, send them any more money or information. It is not uncommon for advanced fee scheme victims to fall into the escalation of commitment trap and continue to send money to the scammers even after they have been told they are being conned. This is because victims can become desperate and are unwilling to let go of the vain hope that the scheme that they are involved in is legitimate. After all, all they eventually get is promised windfall. Now, if you have sent money to scammers, you should inform your local law enforcement agency as soon as possible. Also, take steps to protect your identity by accessing information about the identity theft published by the FTC. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Hope this episode gave you a little more insight of the structure and strategies of the described scam and allowed you to have a better understanding on how it can affect you or many other victims out there. Now we are working on an email plugin, also called the Scaminator, which will work for every email client and will purge all these unwanted messages from your inbox. It will add our special stamp, Scam Alert, beside each email just in case you do decide to open the purge folder, only if your curiosity takes a hold of you. Now, in the meantime, if you do come across new scams using different techniques to lure you into as the next victim, do not hesitate to contact us by email listed below explaining their techniques and incentives given to you to get you to respond to their scam and ultimately send your hard-earned money. We will then cover this scam in one of our episodes and share it with our audience and make sure to give you aforementioned credits at the end of the show. Until then, my friends, stay safe, stay wise, and stay scam free. If you're watching this, you are the resistance. Signing off, the Scaminator. <laughs>